Hi, welcome to Far From Eden. It's good to have you here. You know, the whole red pill thing has kind of exploded in the last, I guess, couple of years. If you think of like when Pearl, you know, broke through, I guess it's been a couple of years for her. And then of course there were a bunch of people that followed after. Before that, I don't think there was you know, a whole lot, certainly not very many women. Um, and I, there just wasn't this amount of content. You had Sandman, you had, you know, a couple others. But MGTOW really wasn't known about, I don't think, nearly as much as it is now. So I found an interesting article, and that's why I wanted to bring up the whole MGTOW. I'm not saying that when this particular article was written, which is um, January of 2017, that, you know, MGTOW didn't exist. Of course it did. And MGTOW existed before anyone ever uttered those weird syllables, MGTOW, you know, because men just figure things out. It's, you know, cost benefit. It's risk. It's uh, assessing risk. And they started realizing, wait a minute, uh, this is not a great deal. And uh, this is actually pretty risky. And uh, what is this? It could be marriage. It could be, you know, working with a woman where if she accuses you of something, if something gets misunderstood, you know, your career's over. And uh, men started figuring it out, at least individually. I think the internet is a place where men could go, oh, wait a second, there's there's other ones too. And I think that's by and large how it has also spread because they go online and they figure out, oh, wait a minute, me, I'm not the only one. Uh, but I was looking around, I like to see, you know, what's, in the so-called news, basically it's feature articles, opinions, but you know, what's, what's uh, newer that people are saying or have said opinions, et cetera, that might be interesting or might uh, shed some light on uh, where we are, where we're going, how we got here. And uh, hopefully where I can contribute to try to, which is sometimes painful, explain or translate, I don't want to say explain because that sounds like justify, but translate what a woman is saying. For example, I was watching uh, 304 math earlier and uh, I was kind of flipping around to some of his shorter videos. I don't know how many I watched, probably a lot. And I got to one where they were talking about when, like for example, on the whatever podcast, when the women rate themselves and, you know, they're like, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. You guys see the one where it's, I hate to say this, but you know, she's putting herself out there. So the one, the chick, not that long ago that looked like Jabba the Hutt. Um, and she rates herself a 10, but then like almost all the other ones did too. One rated herself a 6.7 and, uh, and she was still being generous probably. And, um, he was trying to explain, um, 304 math was trying to explain like, why do women do this? Is it delusion? Is it, you know, fake it till you make it? Is if I, you know, confidence is key. Like if I think this, will it make him think I'm more like this or all these different things. And then in this situation, you're going to be more like this. And, and he's very smart. And I agree with him. I think every other time, every other thing he said on this, I, I have to disagree, uh, and it's no fault of his. He is a very smart man, but I'm sitting here as a woman going, it's none of those things, Mr. 304 Math. It is actually, they're not answering the question they've been asked. So they're not over there like, well, if I pretend I'm a 10, then he's going to think like this, or if I say I'm a 10, they're not saying that. They're answering the question they want to answer. They are answering the question, what do I, how do I value myself on a scale of one to 10? Based on the criteria I choose, 
that's where their ranking is coming from. They need to be asked, and I get it. They probably don't want to feel like they're being cross-examined. But, I mean, half the time that's what goes on on that show. They need to be asked, ah, I understand. That's what. That's how you rank yourself. Now, let me ask it this way. What do you think the majority of men would rank you on an at attractiveness, purely attraction, purely how you look, scale, with 10 being the perfect specimen of a woman and one being, you know, a um, very unfortunate looking being. Where do you honestly think the majority of men, what number would they put you? That's what you have to ask them because then they can't weasel out of it. Now, are they pretending that they don't know what the question is or are they, what are they doing? Some of them are pretending. Some of them know full well what you're asking and choose to answer it differently. Other ones really don't know. They really don't know what you're asking. They really think you mean, how do you value yourself on a scale of one to 10? Anyway, so that is just a good example of translating women, woman brain is what I have come to call it. Often when I'm frustrated with my own, because it, it can be frustrating when I'm trying to be logical and I'm trying to think spatially, that's fun. Uh, but as far as, you know, people and humans and nurturing, like I, I don't beat women up. I don't beat myself up. I just know, I know where my lane is, you know, and I think that's, that's not a bad thing, you know, and I don't, I don't see why. I, I don't think that women should be so insecure that they have to have all the lanes all the time and tell everybody else in their lanes what they're doing. You know, that's no, that's no good. Can't have that. Sorry if I sniff a little bit. I'm not actually sick. I just, my immune systems, it, it's being complicated. I apologize. I'm not doing any kind of bad things uh, that would make me sniff. Okay, just making sure I have all my pages. So, Right away from the title of this article that was written in 2017, and this does not have her name on it. I think it was Amy Horton. I know you guys are going to be like, no, you have to tell me. And you know, and I had the publication just a second. We're going to do it properly. Look at this. We're going to do it properly. Now that I don't record on my phone, I can look on my phone. All right. This is by Amy Horton. And it is from Elite Daily, whatever publication that is. It's in the relationship section. You know, okay. <laughs> I mean, journalism has changed. It's, uh, it's not gotten better. So the title, she's already, she's already rude and crass. The title is, I Don't Hate Men but I'm still waiting for one who doesn't suck. And this is January 28th, 2017. That's why I mentioned MGTOW. This is seven years ago, right? Is that, is my mouth right? It's seven years ago. And this is pre, you know, the fun of 2020 and all that stuff. Um, this, yeah, I mean, <sighs> it feels like a million years ago. Thomas, the train. It feels like a million years ago. But, and this is about a year before Me Too, right? Hashtag Me Too. I think this is a year before that. And so the women were already like, well, where are the men? Da, 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 da. Well, right away, it sounds like she's got the attitude problem, but let's keep open minds. <sighs> I would love to be optimistic about guys. I really would. I have a lot, I have lots of guys in my life I care about, and I don't think men are horrible. However, I do think most of them are really dumb about women almost all the time. 
It's hard to reconcile my feelings for my male friends and family with the bad experiences I have romantically. Well, at least she thought of that because don't we always say that, you know, when women are like dogging on men all the time, like, don't you have a father? Don't you have brothers? Aren't there any men in your life you care about? How can you sit there and insult them like this? At least she's recognizing this. Uh, at least she's saying, I have cognitive dissonance. Hmm. I would love to think better of them. If only you had control of your own brain. Why do, why do women always act like their feelings are not under their control? Their thoughts are not under their control. Like, you made me feel this. Well, you made me think. No one can make you feel anything. I understand that we are humans and we are affected. If someone thinks a certain thing about me and I respect them, that might hurt. But as far as making you, when you give other people that power, you're, you're just, you know, all over the place. Sound familiar? But then again, in that scenario, you never have to take accountability. And that is a huge red flag to look out for, which you shouldn't be looking for the women anyway, because it's too dangerous. But heaven's sakes, she can't be like, you made me mad. You made me sad. You said this. It made me feel it. No, no. So she wished she could think better of them. Like, Change your mind. I honestly wish most guys were amazing and treated women wonderfully. In my dream world, none of us have any horror stories. It sounds like she might be the horror story. Um, most men do treat women wonderfully. What does she mean by that? What, what is this standard? She, how does she treat them? You know, what's she doing? You remember that Janet Jackson song? Have you done for me lately? Remember that song? It was like, lady, what have you? What are you doing? Just waiting for him to do things for you, I guess. Yeah. In my dream world, none of us have horror stories. Hmm. You know, the thing is, is that all these women thought they had horror stories, but in reality, they were the horror stories. And the guy was like, mm -mm, nope, not wife material. And so they didn't commit. They didn't propose in whatever. They moved on. And so all these women have horror stories. It sounds like because they didn't get picked. I know that would make a lot of women mad. But tell me, tell me another reason. Oh, what did he do? He didn't get you flowers all the time? What's wrong? He didn't worship your job? What is it, princess? It wasn't enough about you, was it? That's what it sounds like to me. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not reality. Oh, the men treating women wonderfully. Doesn't this makes me mad for you guys? Like you guys are pretty darn wonderful. I mean, I really think it's wonderful keeping the electric grid going and keeping all the plumbing going and all these inventions we have. You know, and husbands who you know, in the old way of things who provided and protected while the woman, you know, did the things at home, like raised the garden and kept the house clean and schooled children and those things. Yeah, they were pretty wonderful. What is this uh, Hollywood nonsense we're basing it off of here? I wonder. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not reality. It's difficult to like men when I not only experience their idiocy firsthand, but also hear endless stories about how badly they treat my friends. You're only hearing one side of it, silly. Y'all are having competitions of whose boyfriend was the jerkiest. And one lady, one chick is saying to another, oh, 
my boyfriend, da, 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 and the other one's like, oh, that sounds just like Jason. He, da, da, da. And it's like back and forth and back and forth. It's not good for anybody. It's not something to be trying to one up people about. You shouldn't do that anyways, but how badly they treat my friends. Yeah, girlfriends, boyfriend stories are like the old thing about men and like fish stories, you know, like they went fishing and it was this big, you know, you should have seen it. Like, it's a bit like that, you know. Like, really? What did you do? What did you do, sweetie? Huh. Oh, okay. I want to stay positive. I don't think so. I try to think well of guys. I really do. I want to be open-minded, hopeful, and nice. I don't believe her. I don't want to misjudge someone who turns out to be genuinely nice. The problem is I've had so many bad experiences. I'd love to talk to somebody like this one day. And they just keep coming. It's very difficult not to assume the worst. I wonder if she paid attention in like fourth grade math when they learn about common denominators. I mean, nothing to do with any of this, just thought. Yeah, she might want to consider, you know, what the importance of a common denominator is. Huh. I'm hoping one proves me wrong. You hear that, guys? That's the challenge for you. I hope desperately some magical, wonderful man will show up, ready to dispel all my currently held pessimistic beliefs about the way men behave with women. I wish she'd give an example, you know, a detail, just man bad, woman good. Just, I'd like to know some of these expectations. Maybe she'll say them. I don't hold out a lot of hope. We're waiting for a magic man to, uh, you know, prove himself and be wonderful. Oy, oy, oy. I would love nothing more. I can't wait to feel all fuzzy and happy again. I'm just a little worried it'll never happen. It'll never happen. I think they are better as friends. Guys are a lot easier to deal with as buddies. They don't screw me over and I can tell them when they're being awful. There are no stakes involved, and so I don't get hurt. Most of my guy friends also have girlfriends, so I don't have to worry things will get awkward. That's weird, because why do you have them as friends? Why do they have you as a friend? And why wouldn't it get awkward? You, you're trying to tell me that there's never any flirting between people who are, you know, that people never cheat, right? Okay. I don't know who this person is. It's easier to deal with their crap when I'm not directly affected by it. I feel the more open I am, the less interested they are. <sighs> I feel the more open I am, the less interested they are. Um, maybe it's your personality. Uh, maybe, maybe you're a little masculine. Maybe you're a little gruff, crass, lack some, some class. The more, the, I feel more open. I, the more open I am, the less interested they are. That's the, that is the most like self unaware thing to say. I can't figure out why when I'm more open to different opinions than ever before, there are no available men to be found. Oh, they can be found. They don't want her. This is embarrassing. She should be embarrassed. But she has no idea what she's saying. She's like, the more they know me, the more they don't like me. Um, 
Okay, my eyes are going to pop out of my head. <laughs> it's like I've somehow lost all my appeal to the opposite sex, and I don't see why. I'm friendlier and nicer to, nicer, <laughs> nicer to them than I've ever been, but it appears this is a turnoff. Did she hit the wall? FML, you know, bleep my life. I hate that expression. Remember that back in like 2017, around that time? So obnoxious. People, perfectly normal, fine, healthy lives saying that. I was like, really? I feel like they only enjoy the chase. I must be too available to attract men and they only want what they can't have. They only enjoy the chase. I must be too available to attract men and they only want what they can't have. Uh, so you're a 304, you're too available? That's a way to say it. Never heard it put that way. I don't want to go through all that crap. I want to, I want to like a man who likes me back and isn't afraid to show it. End of story. Yes, ma'am. I'm so tired of guys who lose interest in me as soon as I start showing some interest. I guess that's what she means. I treat them fairly and then they disappoint me. I think we know the problem. We know, we know the problem, ma'am. I do give them the benefit of the doubt despite my predisposition not to trust them. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Okay. Oh my gosh, I have to read, I have to read this start finish here. I treat them fairly and then they disappoint me. I do give them the benefit of the doubt despite my predisposition not to trust them, but they blow it every time. Wow. Wow. I'm doing the best I can, but it's pretty difficult to work with the most exasperating creatures ever. Oh my gosh. She's going to be alone, alone forever. This lady is never, mm -mm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find her. I'm so curious now. I always manage to give them another chance, but they soon make it clear they don't deserve it. I ask for only the basics, but they still can't deliver. They don't want to. They can. They can. You are, I think, a rental only. And I'm not a needy woman. I'm independent and self-sufficient. Quite frankly, I enjoy being single. There it is. There it is. You don't need them. You make it clear you don't need them. You make it clear. You're not going to respect them. You make it clear. You're never going to appreciate him. So he's having none of it. And so as soon as you start sharing that stuff, lady, that's when they peace out. You've made it clear. You're telling them you don't need them. You don't even really hardly want them. And the women are like, where are all the men? You said it. You doing what you said. You didn't, you don't need them. They're not good enough for you anyway. So, you know, what are you complaining about? <laughs> All I want from a man are the bare bones of what a relationship requires. But I can't find one who follows through. It's beyond annoying. Where are all the men who give a damn about treating a woman well? What does that even mean? You said you're self-sufficient. You said you're, you only ask for the basics, but you want to be treated well. That's not basics. I guarantee you they picked up on this too. She's so clueless. I can't find one who is emotionally available. <laughs> That's because you lady are not somewhere a man is safe to share his heart. Mm -mm. It seems guys these days are sensitive and whiny as hell. You know what? 
men are people. They have hearts, they have feelings. They care, they love quite fiercely. And these women have the nerve to say, guys these days are sensitive and whiny as hell. Who, who told men to be more in touch with their feelings? I feel like that's all the millennial men were told. She's so masculine, but yet they can't open up about their feelings. What is that crap? Oh my gosh. This lady is more than I could have hoped for. They get upset and defensive about every little thing, but you should forget about having an adult discussion about a relationship problem. You sound like you talk to them like they are children. I would bet that this person is either like a nurse or a teacher. I think in her job, she talks down to people. Wow. I don't, so when she has a discussion about the relationship problem, that's just a criticism of him and how he's not doing what he should be doing and blah, blah, blah. That's all that is. That's lecture time is what that is. That's not a discussion. That's no criticism of her. She wonders why they're like, goodbye. This encapsulates MGTOW. This woman and her issues with men and the things she's saying and the things she's saying men are and all this stuff. I'm like, see, this is why. This is why right here, you, you ma'am, you're the whole reason. Just kidding. I know it's not, she's not the whole reason, but. I mean, she could be the mascot <laughs> if you needed a mascot. And then if she looked like Big Red from um, Cassie J's The Red Pill. <laughs> Isn't that from that movie? God, I need to rewatch that. I don't want to waste my time and energy on that nonsense. All right. So only what's important to her, not what's important to you. I'm not trying to play games. I would like to cut the crap and I would like a man who feels the same. I think you are the man who feels the same. I don't want to pull all this dating bull snot where you have to pretend you don't like each other in order to have a chance with one another. Screw that. Life is too short and I have way too much to do. Okay. If I don't find that elusive mature man, I'll stay single. I know I'm no longer willing to settle. It's better to live my life alone and happy than dissatisfied in a bad relationship. Oh, heaven's sakes. You could never be dissatisfied. Oh, that would be the most horrible thing. I must be satisfied all the time, every moment, every day obnoxious. So obnoxious. Here we go. She keeps going. I would love for a non sucky guy to come my way. But if not, so be it. I'll just keep on doing me and trying not to hate men in spite of all my bad luck. Someday, maybe one will treat me the way I deserve. Um... I think that's exactly what's been going on. Actually, I think you've been being, you've been being, you've been treated better than uh, you deserve, lady, Miss Horton. Ah, she is the epitome of, I should have all of this and it should be my way and I don't even need him, but he should want to be with me and, all these men are the problem, not her. She is absolutely disagreeable, masculine, entitled, and lacks any kind of self-awareness. 
but I know that this is most of them, if not all in one way or another, you know, and they don't see it. They absolutely don't see it. They don't see the ridiculous standards that they have, the expectation that, you know, a relationship is satisfying or unsatisfying or warm and fuzzy. That's not a long-term relationship. Long-term relationship is thick and thin. It is. It is through all the things. And the beauty is that you're still holding on to each other, even when you don't like each other, because there's going to be times you don't like each other. And there's going to be times when, you know, you don't agree with them, but you, if you want things to work, you go along with it and you shut your mouth as the woman, because one of you has to make the, has to have the final say. And it absolutely, you know, breeds such discontent when you don't know whose turn it is and how do you decide? Well, whoever wants it more, it's just going to come down to a battle of wills. So, but when women go into those relationships, the few who ever do, they understand that and that's what they want too, because it works the best. And sometimes it's easier for the woman because she doesn't have to make the hard choice. And sometimes it's harder for the woman because she has to do the things she doesn't want to do. But overall, you know, there's a trade-off for both. The man has to, he's got the, the, the heavy burden and responsibility of making the decision. And, but he also kind of gets to, so it can be his way. But the thing there too, and, and men and women need to realize this, is men do care about their wife's happiness. They do. They're not horrible people. They don't, they don't just like not care at all. Of course they want her to be happy. Of course they do. When they stop trying, it's because she has made it clear it's not possible and it, he's going to be criticized every which way he tries. You know, and some men are more expressive than others, just like some women are. You know, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses, but, you know, a long-term relationship is not warm and fuzzy and, you know, it, it's not those things. There needs to be, it, it can't be independent, I'm independent. Because if you're independent, then go be independent. You'll never, as a woman, be in a successful relationship when you're just as comfortably comfortable being independent or think of yourself that way. And I know that would be very unpopular and people would think like, oh, I'm brainwashed. And I'm like, no, I'm not actually studied it quite a bit and looked at, you know, history and definitely see what's going on now. It's not good. It's not good. People are very unhappy. Uh, so that was quite the gift, that article, 2017. And I mean, it could have been written today. It, I would, it wouldn't have shocked you, would it, if I said this was last week? Because this is what we see on, I feel like I could see it on like Man Reacts thumbnail or something, you know, or Man Guide or any of those type channels. I feel like this is like, this was 2017. And they're that brazen. Imagine being that brazen about like what you should have and what, you know, and, and that you have all these horror stories and you have bad luck. And it's like, I, lady, I just, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. It would be cool though, if I could one day interview people like that. I know I've talked to a couple of you guys via email uh, about possible interview and stuff like that. And uh, I, I mean it, I'm having a little bit of issues health-wise this week, and I just need to get to a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, more solid 
place where I feel more comfortable scheduling, you know, something, setting up like a, a time and stuff like that. I would hate to have to, you know, cancel and stuff like that. So I feel very glad that I can make these videos on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No jinxies for this week. Uh, but uh, I'm, I've been able to manage to do that and I'm very glad. And it's been very motivating, um, very inspiring that you guys are there and that these are valuable. So I think it's it's kind of going both ways. We have a we have a good thing going, I think, here on this channel and in the chat. I need to catch up on posting a couple more uh, videos uh, to the other platform that begins with an R and is green. And I'm still working on what to do for a uh, first locals some locals content. It can be a little spicier. I can be a little more outspoken. So I'm kind of like, Ooh, careful now. Uh, just, I don't want to get to politics or anything like that because I don't, you know, want to, I don't want to alienate anybody from the important message because of, you know, how much I hate communism <laughs> or anything like that. But, uh, you know, yesterday with the news that came uh, down in New York, I was like, oh, should I talk about it? And I was like, I probably shouldn't because I'd probably end up making everybody mad. And uh, we don't need that. We don't need it to come between us. So, oh gosh. Well, that was that was a gold nugget that I found that, uh, that article. Fantastic. They make it? Uh, I don't know. It's like a little kid having a tantrum in Walmart where they're just having a tantrum. They have no idea. Like everyone can see you because they're ha a kid having a tantrum. They really have no idea. They don't really care. And um, that's what that article was like. I was like, you know, you're saying this, right? But I know like you guys are like, this is our lives. This is what we've lived. And I, some of you are like 2017, forget about that. You know, you'll probably talk about 1998 or something when you were like, yeah, that's when I really started to figure out that I would need to go my own way. It's, it's been a thing, you know? I mean, yeah. Some of you are going to be like, Hey, Paul was MGTOW in the Bible. Jesus is MGTOW in the Bible. You know, you have a point, you have a point, you know, I think men do a lot of good thinking when they don't have the, the women folk to distract them and pull them off course which can sometimes happen. So, all right, you guys, uh, this one's a little teensy bit shorter, but uh, that's all right. That's all right. Oh, I love you guys. And I hope that you had a great Friday and that you are looking forward to a restful weekend and planning on how you're going to feed your soul and find peace because it's so important, both of those things. And, um, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye.